Hello, and welcome to Simply Space. Today's simplified space topic is type 1a supernovae and how scientists use them in their research today. <laughs> Measuring distances in space isn't easy. You can't take a ruler and measure the distance from the Earth to a star. It's way too far away. On top of that, everything is constantly moving. And another problem is that when you look into the sky, it looks like everything is on a flat surface surrounding the Earth. So how do we measure distances in space? One of the most common methods to measure distances in space relies on the use of objects called standard candles. This method uses one visible difference we see in objects in space, brightness. In space, there are objects that give off a known amount of light. These objects are used as standards of comparison. The farther away light source is, the more the photons disperse and the dimmer the object will appear. By comparing a star's true brightness to how bright it appears, scientists can measure its distance. By measuring redshift, which is a stretching of light waves caused by the expansion of the universe, how fast the star is moving away from the Earth. To put this on a smaller scale, let's take three candles placed at one meter intervals with an observer on one side. To the observer, the farthest candle will appear the dimmest, while the closest will appear the brightest. To be exact, the candles will follow the inverse square law, which means the second candle will be one-fourth as bright as the first one, and the third candle will be one-ninth as bright as the first candle. For objects in galaxies extremely far away, we need an incredibly bright object to use as a standard candle. The answer to this lies in supernovae, which are exploding stars. Supernovae occur within a galaxy about once every 100 years, and can be as bright as the host galaxy itself. There are several types of supernovae. The optimal for use as standard candles are the type 1a supernovae, as they all have the nearly the same luminosity at their bright face. Type 1a supernovae occur in a binary system, systems in which two stars orbit each other. One of the stars will be a white dwarf, and the other can be any type of star. For a type A supernovae to occur, the white dwarf must acquire mass from its companion star. This can occur in several situations. For example, the companion star could be orbiting too close, and the gravity of the white dwarf will pull gas from its companion. Or the companion star could be a red giant in the process of shedding its outer layer of gas. Regardless of the method, an accretion disk forms around the white dwarf, and it will gain mass. This process will continue until the white dwarf nears the Chandrastikar limit the maximum mass of a stable white dwarf, which is about 1.44 solar masses. This is named for the Indian-American astrophysicist Subramanyam Chandrastikar, who improved the calculation from the earlier published value. Beyond this limit, even the repulsive force of electrons, when compacted, or electron degeneracy pressure cannot support the mass of the star, causing it to explode. The analysis of type 1a supernovae begins before it explodes. Astronomers will notice an object with varying brightness. A light curve of the object will show a pattern of dips in brightness. This is caused by one of the stars blocking the light of the other as it passes in front of the other in a binary system. A binary system is an automatic candidate for a type 1a supernovae. When astronomers notice the system become a supernovae, astronomers will subtract post and pre-supernova pictures to create the picture of the supernovae in its own. In addition, its light curves will be plotted. These light curves are essentially a graph of brightness over time. Through these, redshifts can be determined. This is similar to using the brightness of a car headlights at night to estimate how far away it is. For example, if one car's headlight appears four times as bright as those of an identical car, the first car must be half the distance to the second due to the inverse square rule. Type 1a supernovae are the cosmic equivalent of cars with the same wattage of headlights. These observations are used to determine how fast the universe is expanding in different parts. The Dark Energy Survey uses these measurements to study expansion, which gives a better understanding of dark energy and its role in the universe. Thank you for watching our video on Type 1a Supernovae. If you want more information on anything we discussed today, please visit our website by clicking the link in the description below. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to Simply Space, and we will see you next time with a new space topic to simplify.